Hi, boys and girls. Surprised to see me? I'll bet you are expecting another fabulous insect. Disappointed to see a fellow human being. I've been fascinated with insects ever since I was in second grade, so I wanted to let you know that if you are like me, you might be lucky enough to keep learning about insects in your whole life. I'm an entomologist, and studying insects is my job. Some people call me the bug lady, but I study much more than bugs. Here the word bug means a small insect that has a beak-like mouth with sucking mouth parts. The word bug can also mean to annoy someone. When I was your age, I called everything that creeps and crawls or buzzes and flies a bug. Do you do that sometimes too? Lots of people do, but did you know that a bug and an insect are not the same thing? A bug is an insect, but not all insects are bugs. Confusing, isn't it? Scientists identify true bugs as insects with beak-like mouths. These piercing, sucking mouth parts allow the insect to pierce the leaf or stem of a plant and suck out the plant juices inside. Let's look at a few bugs. This is a stink bug. This is a bed bug. Tree hoppers and aphids are bugs too. Here's one you should recognize, a cicada. Look closely if you see one of these bugs outside and you may see its long, piercing mouth parts. This is another familiar insect. What is it called? Right, a ladybug. It's called a bug, but is it? Does it have a beak-like mouth with a long piercing tube? No. Fascinating, isn't it? A ladybug isn't a bug at all. I thought you should know about bugs, but the real reason I'm here today is to talk to you about helpful and harmful insects. I'll start with the bad news. You already know that some plant-eating insects cause major crop damage. So what's the word used to describe something that causes major damage or harm? Destructive. Leafcutter ants can strip the leaves from an orange grove in one night. A swarm of locusts or large grasshoppers can strip large areas of grassland in just a few hours. Fruit flies are orchard pests as well. The larvae of many moths, flies, bugs, beetles, and weevils are pests. The Colorado potato beetle is another example of an insect that damages crops. Adults and larvae eat the leaves of the potato plant. Damaged plants can't produce as many potatoes. This is a picture of a potato beetle. So what's the solution? Humans thought that they had a great idea. They created poisonous substances called pesticides that would kill all of the insect pests on the whole field so the crops could grow without being eaten. But there was a problem with that. Do you think the pests were the only animals living in the field? It turns out that the pesticides can be just as, a, as big of a problem as the pests themselves. These poisons destroy both harmful and helpful insects. Frogs and birds may eat the poisoned insects and become sick too. They may even die. Pesticides have killed pollinators like the honeybee. So pollinators are insects that carry pollen from one plant to another to enable plants to grow and produce flowers or fruit. Without pollinators, plants cannot make seeds to grow new plants or produce fruits. With fewer plants, fewer insects are able to survive. So you see, the human use of pesticides changes the environment for everybody, and not in a good way. Because of this, you can see how a person can be a foe or enemy of insects. A better solution is one, and one that's being used by many farmers today is to keep plant pests under control by introducing their natural enemies, one insect against the other. Ladybugs and lacewings are predators that catch and eat aphids. Wasps and ants eat insects harmful to crops as well. Doesn't it make better sense to use animals to control the growth of pests and weeds instead of poisonous chemicals that kill all living things? I think so. I do have a little bit more bad news for you before I get to the good news. Some insects can be dirty. They can spread germs. When flies, ants, and cockroaches walk across our kitchen countertops with the same feet they use to crawl through dirt and rotting plants, they can poison our food and make us sick. Some insects, such as mosquitoes, fleas, bedbugs, and lice, live off host animals. You've heard about host plants, so a host animal would be what? These types of insects can be very harmful to people. The Anopheles mosquito carries malaria, a deadly disease that's wiped out whole villages in Africa. Hundreds of years ago, fleas that carried deadly bacteria spread the plague, 
a disease that killed millions of people, or almost one-third of Europe. Today, fleas are more irritating than deadly. That's enough bad news. Are you ready for some good news? There's lots of it. You already know how important honeybees and other plant pollinators are to the survival of the planet. Without pollinators, there would be no beautiful flowers or sweet fruit, because the crops would not be pollinated, and crops need to be pollinated in order to grow. Scavenger insects like the dung beetle are important too. By feeding on dead plants and animals and their waste products, scavengers break up dead material and return rich nutrients to the soil. Insects are also responsible for many products that humans use. What product does the honeybee give us? Yes, honey. They also give us beeswax, used to make wood polishes and candles, and even lipsticks. Did you know that the spider is not the only creature that spins silk? Many other insects produce silk as well. The silk moth lays its eggs on the leaves of mulberry trees. Their larvae, silk caterpillars, spin cocoons out of a single strand of silk. The silk from their cocoons is gathered and unwound to produce beautiful silk thread used to make cloth. You know that insects are a good food source for other insects and animals, but did you, did you know that many people eat insects as well? Lightly salted crickets are eaten as snacks in many parts of Asia. Roasted grasshoppers with chili and lime are popular in Mexico. Roasted termites are a part of the regular diet of many Africans. Some Australians feast on beetle larvae, and some Europeans enjoy the sweet crunch of chocolate-covered ants. You know that insects make up the largest group of animals on Earth. Their ability to adapt over time to nearly every environment has made them terrifically successful survivors on our planet. So what does the word adapt mean? Whereas we think that humans have been around for about 40,000 years, some scientists believe that insects have lived on Earth for about 400 million years. They are the most varied of all, in, of all animals coming in all shapes, colors, and sizes. Scientists guess that there are over 1 million species, but it's hard to know for sure because it's impossible to count them all as they crawl, fly, swim, and hide all around the world. Even with all of these millions and billions and trillions of insects, some are in danger of extinction or disappearing from the earth. How can that be? It happens when many insects are killed at the same time. We humans are insects' worst enemies because we often destroy their native habitats. So what's the word you heard a few minutes ago that means an enemy? For example, huge areas of the rainforest have been cleared. When trees are cut down for wood, all of the plants are removed and the insects that live in the plants are destroyed. Insects and other animals that feed on those insects are affected when they can no longer find enough food. Also, people build homes in the desert and not only destroy animal habitats, but also very quickly use up all the water that the desert insects need to survive. Grasslands are often cleared for planting crops. When the grassland host plants disappear, their visiting insects cannot survive. Water is often drained from wetlands to build farms, homes, and roads. When this happens, fertilizers from the farmer's fields often run into the wetlands and encourage plants there to grow out of control. They soak up all the water, and the wetland dries up. So why do you think it matters whether insects become extinct? Isn't it good to kill those often pesky, sometimes deadly critters? I don't think so. Think about the honeybee. It may sting you, but a moment's pain is nothing compared to all the benefits it provides by helping to pollinate plants and produce fr fruits or other foods that you need to survive. We still have a lot to learn about the insect world, but we do know that everything in our world is connected and that plants and animals depend upon one another for survival. We don't want to upset the balance of nature. Now that you know how important insects are to our world, I hope that you'll think twice before squashing a bug beneath your feet. I encourage you to use your own schoolyard to look for insects and spiders. Where might you look? Lots of places. Under a rock, in the grass, on bushes and trees, on flowers, and in the soil. Remember, many insects are very good at camouflage, so don't give up. They may be hiding in plain sight. 